Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure to introduce Sophia Ananyadu. Um, she'll be giving a talk that's titled Extracting Events from Biomedical Relevance from Text. Um, so currently, Sophia is the director of the National Center for Text Mining at the University of Manchester, as well as a professor in computer science there. I've had a long, the pleasure of knowing Sophia for quite a long time. And the first BioNLP workshop, which was it 2001 or 2002, I remember attending. Two. Two. <laughs> I remember attending that workshop because I was really interested in text mining for biomedical, from biomedical text. And Sophia and Professor Tsuji both cautioned me. They said, you shouldn't go into this unless you have a par partner in biology. It is just too, too much otherwise. And so I heeded their warning. Um, but now I have partners, um, I, you know, both at Microsoft and at University of Washington. But it's really been a very interesting field, and I'm excited that Sophia will tell us more about it. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy, for the introduction. Um, so um, I would um, focus on one only area. I mean, we're doing several things in, uh, at, uh, at NACTEM. I'll just to give you the first uh, slide to understand what, who we are and what we are doing. Uh, NACTEM uh, resides at the University of Manchester, and as Lucy said, you need to be collocated with biologists, so they placed us at the Manchester uh, Interdisciplinary Biocenter uh, with uh, mainly chemists, biologists, and people like that, who are actually quite interested in what we're doing. So our, we started around 2004 and 2005, uh, and we focused predominantly on uh, providing text mining service solutions for uh, the bio domain, the medical, increasingly the medical now domain. Uh, now we are a sustainable center. I just uh, provided only two or three of our funders. We have been funded by industry and other, uh, other different types of funders. So, um, uh, so all the things I'm going to say today are being par part of the center, the work we have been doing. But mostly I will focus on more most recent work on extracting events as a call of, bi of biological relevance. I'll explain what's that. Why we're talking about events? Uh, in biomedicine, we have what we call this fragmentation in different types of specialisms, uh, subspecialisms. There are uh, different components aspects in systems biology or in systems medicine increasingly that deal with chemistry, the biology, medicine and lots of uh, omics, different levels from uh, transcriptomics to uh, genomics, metabolomics, proteomics, etc. So all this type of uh, the translational to um, deal with the various translational aspects uh, for different applications, uh, one needs to uh, go into a kind of deeper type of analysis of text, not just, of course, keyword extraction or association mining, but uh, trying to find out more uh, complex information, as I'll discuss what is an event. Um, I will also talk in, uh, uh, place some emphasis in my talk in some applications which are related with events. So I'll skip all the rest, so the whole discussion is going to be about event extraction and how this has been realized in uh, different applications. So uh, in case you haven't um, heard before, I don't know what your background, some people of course know all about they're natural language processing people, but maybe some of you are not. If we take a simple sentence that uh, you find in any paper made line, like uh, expression of Aurora B enhances phosphorylation of uh, S6K1 and for EBP1, which is a normal sentence, this sentence uh, includes various types of events. Some are complex, some are uh, simple. A simple event of uh, a type uh, is an expression. Uh, which is, of course, realized uh, with a, a normalization expression. It has a trigger, and the theme, so the object, is Aurora B. You have another event dealing with phosphorylation, whose theme is uh, S6K1, and another event, and again, which is, starts from phosphorylation, another object, uh, 4EBP1. Now, uh, those events also 
have, if you look at the event four, uh, which is uh, under enhances, after enhances, you have two types of regula positive regulation. Uh, and the positive regulation has a kind of cause and effect. And the cause uh, includes another one event, the event one, the expression, which you will see here. Do you have any pointer, perhaps? Or? Ah, yes, you do. Yeah, this one. <laughs> so you have this, so the event one. And then the event two, which is phosphorylation, which is the theme here. And another more complex event. So just to give you an idea of the types of um, uh, analysis we need to do. Why we need to do that is because you're going, we need to go to a level which is bridging the, the universe of text, the, you know, the sphere of text with, with knowledge. And biologists care really much more about uh, phosphor, you know, more sort of biological events of biological pertinence, what is biologically important, than what is actually the expression in text. Um, so now that you've seen what actually we're trying to do, uh, by event, is beyond relation. So people in the past have really focused on extracting protein-protein interactions, gene disease associations. So there's still a, a kind of binary type of relation, which is uh, in a sense uh, somehow simpler to do. But what we are dealing here is much more complex, is really going into a type of bridging to the knowledge sphere of uh, biology. So it's a, what we call a more, an event is a, a dynamic, a biorelation, which most of the time is, has many arguments. So very rarely it's a kind of uh, binary. And uh, all those events, how we draw them from reality, we use ontologies, very often we use go ontology, but you can create, you use, define or merge different types of ontologies. And they have uh, lots of um, participants in linguistics, we call them theme, cause or whatever, you can do arguments. Uh, but th these uh, roles are really geared by the domain, basically they're domain uh, um, um, dependent. And the various uh, types of participants could be, um, uh, as you saw before, uh, other entities like bioentities, proteins or genes, but uh, increasingly they have, they have other events. So uh, a bio-event has, it's a quite, I was say, quite complex because it draws from ontologies and includes different types of other entities. So this is going to be basically the focus of my talk. I'll just focus only on events. And um, I will uh, explain how this, um, uh, what kind of uh, technology we have used to, to build that as part of my, members of my team, and how we applied you, this event extraction to search, to semantic search, existing systems we already had like media, uh, or systems who are actually mine associations, direct and direct associations, but you can do this including events. Uh, increasingly events of course are very important for like extracting bioprocesses, like angiogenesis. And also um, if you want to uh, go talking about my first slide, the various omics uh, uh, types of problem, if you want to uh, integrate multiple levels of uh, biological organization, which I will discuss. Uh, in addition, we um, have uh, uh, included, integrated this technology towards pathway reconstruction, and I don't say construction because we don't do automatic pathway <laughs> construction yet, that's very difficult, but how you can actually produce the types of evidence to enrich the pathways. And last but not least is actually a quite, we think, a very interesting and uh, upcoming area is what we call the event interpretation. So what are the experimental findings or what is no, known information or old or uh, hypothetical or speculative that actually could be very important when you're building for search and for all the above and for pathways. For that, I will not discuss. You need, of course, to have uh, most of our techniques currently have been supervised. So you need uh, not training. You need to have training data. And um, I'm not going to talk about this, but uh, you can find them on, I think quite, quite a few people know Biofair and Genia. Another event corpora that we have basically uh, built. And uh, last but not least, I'll end up my talk with the shared tasks who are extremely important in the community. Uh, first of all, to inform and evaluate our tools, but also to obtain the training corpora for to be able to build more uh, tools. So, um, this is the, the focus on the applications. It's basically semantic search. 
hypothesis gen generator. This is very important for medical and clinical applications in order to mine direct and indirect associations, uh, extracting events across uh, multiple do uh, domains, enriching pathways, and also to do that, I will uh, very briefly uh, allude to an environment, a platform we have built, which uh, integrates the processing components and the annotation, which is very important for the curators. So um, <clears throat> basically what I said before, it's a kind of nice diagram, and because I've done it, why not? It's exactly the same thing I told you before. This sentence basically kind of represented by the various events, phosphorylation, binding, with different types of arguments. Here you have, for instance, a side theme, and the, the top are, uh, basically uh, event is uh, negative regulation. This is what the biologists, when they want to search, they're interested in uh, negative regulation, in positive regulation, in inhibition, in, and so on. Uh, the very rarely, if you start searching with keywords, you would have an enormous amount of noise, of not too much, so much relevance for biology. So for that, we have uh, one of the tools I'll present briefly. And if you want, there are lots of papers that uh, it's basically Miwa's work, uh, who used to work with uh, Junichi's uh, team in Tokyo, and where he started this actually tool, and now he's working with NACTEM. So um, event mine is basically detects, extracts event structures, and is using a, a deep parser, uh, ENJU. Uh, I'm not going to talk about ENJU because it's uh, basically extracting predicate argument structures. Uh, so it's a kind of more deeper uh, um, uh, syntax. So what it does, what uh, uh, event mine does, uh, maps from the deep parse results into event structures. And uh, has, uh, Migo has used all sorts of different features, experiments, as you will see, for classification, shortest path, a bug of words, and so on. And uh, it, it's an SVM uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, using uh, his training classifiers, SVM using various annotated corpora for each module. The annotated corpora have been mostly used by the shared tasks, that's why <laughs> they're very important. And of course, the, the work of Genia that uh, we have, uh, Junichi has built over several years. So um, how this uh, actually work? Uh, very briefly, if you want more, you can uh, read uh, especially the last, uh, the last of those papers where he describes in uh, uh, detail event mine. Uh, it's a pipeline, it's a kind of a traditional pipeline of uh, an event extraction system which has a uh, volume component. So each component is done in sort of module independently. You have the triggers, the entity detector. So you have like a um, phosphorylation, uh, extracting, identifying triggers is a quite challenging uh, stuff uh, uh, often because lots of ambiguity. And uh, there's been uh, quite a lot of work of people trying to uh, improve actually uh, the extraction of triggers. Um, so you have um, uh, for inhib negative regulation inhibits, another trigger for binding for the event binding is binding and entities. And then the next part is actually once you identify the triggers, you have to find the arguments or the edges. And for this you have, uh, as I said, it, it's based on NG, on a parser. Uh, so you have inhibits and phosphorylation. Uh, inhibits to binding and uh, in relation of theme, the arguments, binding and CD40, and so on. Uh, the, I think what we, I, we believe is a very uh, interesting, as you will see later on, part is how you're dealing with uh, multiple arguments. So you have then a multi-argument event detector. Uh, so you have here inhibits, has causality, so you have this type of information and binding a theme and so on, complex basically events. And uh, multi-argument uh, event detection is extremely important for the types of complex events we were talking about. Um, and this will be seen with some of the results they have produced. The last, but uh, you have on top of that, once you finish with that multi-argument detection, you add the modification. And the modification is mostly uh, information like hedging, uh, speculation, contradiction, negation, and so on. So in the bio-NLP task, it, it uh, receives, actually he has been, he, he got about 58%, 15, which is uh, really one of the top F scores. So uh, uh, some further information, which you can find on, on, the, on the latest paper, 
is a type of, uh, uh, it's basically a, a multi-class, multi-label classification problem. And some of the feature types are described here for triggers, for arguments, shorter paths, terminal nodes, words around counted pairs, and so on, and for multi-argument and for modification. So um, the, there have been several extensions to event mine, which we thought they were quite important. Um, especially when we're dealing with full papers. But I think the most important is for when you're trying to adapt event mind to different domains, not even, even within biology and biomedicine. So if you're trying to extract, um, uh, for instance, for pathways, you have signaling to metabolic pathways, you have different types of arguments, and you need to adapt your uh, uh, type of event extraction. So the first, see, this is basically, the, in, in this recent paper, everything is described there, so I'm not going to repeat the same paper. But uh, I'll just very, very briefly talk about uh, the coreference resolution and the domain adaptation. And in the end, I will talk about the meta-knowledge assignment. So in a, in a sense, event mine, after you, know, after you extract multi-argument events, it does three more things. Uh, it does coreference. It, uh, is, it already has includes some components for domain adaptation using various corpora, and it does meta-knowledge uh, assignment, uh, basically hypothesis, negation, speculation. Uh, well, a very simple thing, what is uh, the coreference uh, resolution? Uh, you have to uh, um, link uh, mentions, uh, mentions and antecedents. So in this case, is a very simple example, ex example of uh, um, uh, the uh, MS treatment was also associated with the rapid induction of June B gene, although expression of this gene was prolonged compared to that. So you have, uh, you need to link basically mentions with the antecedents. This is um, <clears throat> increasingly important. It's very important for full papers rather than less than abstracts. So you, the results can be seen when you're dealing, uh, extracting events from full papers. Although I have to warn you, you don't find a kind of wow, a fantastic uh, uh, you know, uh, improvement in the event mind, in the event recognition. So still it's a difficult <laughs> problem. <laughs> That's the first you. So this is basically includes a kind of rule-based coreference where you actually have to detect uh, uh, the mentions candidates, then the antecedents, and then the links. So, um, <coughs> so basically, <coughs> how those, sorry, how those results are uh, um, integrated into the event extraction system is by modifying the parse results. So mentions and the share the dependencies. This is the PR feature. And then the extending the features to have uh, coreferential uh, mentions to argument detector features, the FE. So what you see here is basically <clears throat> this is the best performance here by adding all those features. And it's about 58 from the baseline for 5815, uh, 5881. So <clears throat> it's a tiny one, tiny one. So <coughs> this was actually not trained, it was trained on abstracts and applied to full papers. So it's actually not bad. I think we believe it, if we had annotated corpora on full papers with coreference, uh, then it would have been slightly better. On the domain adaptation, which uh, I think it's uh, uh, much more interested. Um, he used uh, two methods for domain adaptation, the stacking method and the, um, um, uh, the, the weighting method, which uh, he has applied for the, the instance weighting method, which has applied for the two types of the shared task, the Genia uh, uh, 2009 and 11. The interesting thing is here, actually. In the, li in the last shared tasks, there have been um, different types, have been full papers and abstracts. And we had um, also uh, types of uh, relations and events which are of a quite different types. So the infectious diseases, for instance, or the epigenetic corpus had different types of events and of course the other uh, was for relation and the traditional shared tasks. So when you're actually comparing the performance, you have to see it across different domains, in this case is the epigenetics or the uh, infectious diseases, and different types of, uh, um, of text, full and abstracts. So actually from here you can see a quite uh, a big jump from 47% to 51% and 50 to 52.39. 
So <clears throat> basically, the, by uh, including those components, I don't know if there's anything else there. To say. Oh yes, compared with other systems, um, you might say, well, you know, it's n why event extraction. You will not have the performances you have in entity recognition. It will still be in the quite, uh, I think, top close to 60. Uh, currently, it's very, it's a very good actually result. Um, but um, it is important in comparison to other systems to be able to uh, deal well, well with full papers and abstracts, to be able to deal well across various different types of uh, corpora, which deal with different types of events. Um, and basically this is, in, in, in a sense, for full papers, you do quite a bit better, much better, if you incorporate coreference. So this is basically some of the enhancements of the event mine which actually boosted a lot the performance and outperforms other systems. If you want more about all the details, it's in the paper. So, <coughs> the, uh, the riddle is uh, from uh, Mass, is Riddles. R riddle, Riddle is the, uh, the name, and Turkus. Turkus is in, uh, in, um, uh, in Finland. So th those are the top, uh, the, so this is how we compared with the top system. Is system it's a system combination. Yeah. It's, so, what is it? Stanford, Stanford, Stanford and, Mass and the Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, I forgot Stanford. Yes. It's not Mass, yeah. So, so those are the top, I mean, we we'll comp uh, compare with the top system. So uh, I'll, uh, basically it's all that, all the details in the, last, the latest bioinformatics paper. So <clears throat> how we use that now? So what's, okay, fine. Did we have fun improving performances <laughs> in minute <laughs> details? So, first of all, uh, biologists want to search, want to this type of system to be as much as, um, as accurate as possible, as is possible to, to do search. So we use the media, which has been built by Junichi when he was in Tokyo, before he joined Microsoft. <laughs> and um, we enhanced it. We, uh, media already was uh, doing semantic search based on facts. It was a system which was actually in 2006 uh, quite very novel was actually extracting facts from the whole of Medline based on uh, on, on, on deparsing. Um, so, for instance, you can extract what is activated by circadian clock, what cycles are regulated. So, you are basically neutralizing all this syntactic variability that you have in text. And when you're making this query, you really extract proper subjects and objects, which at the time it was not possible for other systems. Uh, <clears throat> And this is the system you can still, uh, well, this is Andrew. So I'm going to talk about Andrew with the Junichi being here. <laughs> and um, um, but if you want to find about the information, it's basically on HPSG. So this is how it looks like before we added the events. So if you put for something is on the website of NACTEM, so you can, it's open. People can uh, uh, use the web services so can hook into this if they want to. It's based on the whole of Medline. <clears throat> And uh, if you ask uh, any kind, uh, currently we use a template type of uh, subject, verb, object. Uh, so you can ask questions like, uh, which then translate it into a quest, into query. Uh, P53, what P53 activates. <clears throat> what you have here are basically the sentences, which as you see there, basically you have may amplify, you have, a, it's a kind of uh, an expansion with ontologies and extract sentences, which are pertinent to this query. Um, so, so basically, and as you can see here, it deals very well with passive voice and all that, which is very important. So, and also, you can change the the the, the form the uh, format. Um, you could look at um, <coughs> in a more tabular, uh, uh, you know, uh, form. Uh, so you can see here you have verbs like amplify, mediate, activate, which are synonyms and they are very relevant to your query. Uh, and immediately the user can see <clears throat> from what P50 activates from those sentences, extracted sentences, if they're of interest. And if, you're, if they're of interest, then they can click to the title of the paper. And also, uh, they're all linked to all the various databases. So you can just uh, click into a, a gene or to a disease and, and uh, have access to all the various uh, databases. <clears throat> so talking, going back to events, well, all this, this kind of multi-argument, how we can actually now change media and add events, how we can search with events. 
So <clears throat> we used now this type of events based again on the shared tasks. That's why shared tasks are important <laughs> because uh, it's, it's quite a lot of work. You have to, uh, in, in, in a sense, the, the, in, in molecular biology, these are the types of events of upper level that people are looking for. So if you ask them what else do you need, they will come back to a quite high level phosphorylations, binding, positive regulation, and so on. This is what they want to search. So if I, if I just put my query as localization, so you will have the interface localization of, you don't have to, spe you can specify the type of thing, the object, or not. If you don't specify, what you will have now are sentences, which basically are retrieved within a specified location and theme. Okay, so there are still sentences retrieved with a localization uh, event as a query. You can then, just to give you an example, you put localization of TNF-alpha, you specify. So this, this is, these are the sentences extracted with this specific uh, type of uh, argument. And um, you can have, oh, this is actually in a different a tabular form. So you can see immediately, oops, let me go back. <coughs> I did here. That's it. Yeah. And this is a much more complex uh, where you have a positive regulation and another event as well, phosphorylation of and various arguments. So although this sounds quite complex, in a sense this is exactly the type of type of information that if you want to, for instance, uh, reconstruct pathways or if you want to uh, ask questions of biological relevance, this is the type of upper level information that people want to know. So what you have in text <clears throat> are just various instances, various realizations of this upper level biological events. And you can specify, of course, the site or the cause if you want to. But currently it gives you the sentences automatically from the whole of Medline that uh, uh, respond to this kind of query. So, uh, and that's a, a different way of representing. So you see here you have, it's a kind of a, a, no, a frame, a knowledge frame really, which is extracted from, from text right now. So you have various types of responses to this slot. So <clears throat> this is actually one type of um, um, uh, event, uh, the, how complex events, or if I go back to this, can be in integrated into a search system like Median. So you can update it to just do that, but also you can up upgrade it to a, a search events of different types of biological pertinence. So if in this case we have molecular biology, but you can work or you can just absolutely train event miner, event mine to be able to uh, extract different types of events as long as you have the, uh, uh, the annotations, the biological relevance. So going back to that, another um, follow-up actually work on events was at the realization that most of our focus for the past 10 years was on molecular type of entities. So we were extracting genes, proteins, chemicals, and drugs. And very often we really focused on, as I said, on the uh, simple of binary types of associations, like protein, protein, drug, and drug. So a very, um, again, from what the biologists are telling us is you need to actually expand uh, to go from, uh, uh, from the molecule level to organism. So this is a very recent work. We, we just, uh, it's just going to be published in next month in bioinformatics. It's actually event extraction which goes from across levels. So from the molecular to the anatomical, cellular components, cells, tissues, and organs to organisms. And in the end, if you have from this one, basically, I don't know if I have that, you want to be able to extract this type of information in the end as well. So right now we're going somewhere here, but we want to be able to extract uh, about uh, to growth, about an, um, organs, about anatomical information, and so on. So uh, this is where we have really uh, worked uh, most of the community for protein post-translational epigenetic regulations, molecular mechanisms. But what, this is a kind of limitation of going forward, especially for health. This is extremely important to go across levels. 
So uh, <clears throat> the approach that uh, we, we, we did, we have done some work on extracting uh, complex bioprocesses based on angiogenesis. That was in collaboration with AstraZeneca. Uh, actually, the last month this project finished. But we created a very nice corpus which had a kind of this type of very detailed information, which is actually publicly available. Although it's a small corpus, but it took a lot of time to prepare. Uh, but initially, this one used um, sort of type span representation. So the, the new work we're doing across level, we basically added event representations. Uh, we extended the types to uh, have more anatomical entities and others, which you will see later on immediately now and based on uh, Obo, Go, and Karo, which are anatomical entities. So here is actually the types of entities we used, examples, organisms, uh, anatomical system, organ, multi-tissue structure, uh, developing structure, tissues, and so on, organism substance, pathological formation. This is mostly following Karo, and uh, for uh, entity anatomy level events, uh, those types are like skin development or fiber formation, growth of arteries, tumor, remodeling, breakdown, death, cell proliferation, and plant. This is mostly from anatomy level processes from Go. So what is actually um, uh, we have used, actually this is mostly Sampo's work uh, and Miwa's, uh, we used um, our tools, we used event mine with Tenju, we used, um, uh, first of all, we used Tenju, then you apply event mine to adapt to the various types of uh, events and then uh, you, you need for this specific domain. But what you're recognizing now here, as you see, is organ, multi tissue structure, pathological formation, organism substance, and so on. So this is actually extending the problem uh, to go to a much more, to do it more multi level. Um, uh, some of the results here <coughs> uh, for by uh, categories actually uh, uh, combine the baselines 57 F52 and uh, using various uh, other previous annotation resources and anatomical for entities 81, 76 and molecular 72. So it's okay. Uh, the um, resource, all the resources are on the, our website. The corpus, it's called M. Lee, and uh, it's actually an extension of event extraction to um, various uh, different levels of biological organization. It's very richly annotated with about 8,000 entity and 6,000 event annotations. Um, and also, uh, in a sense, also it shows how event mind could be also be used in this type of domains. And uh, um, you know, we used various resources like uh, ontologies and so on. So some of the references are here. The, the initial corpus was that on bioprocesses we did for angiogenesis, and this is the one which is uh, published well very soon, in about a few two weeks time. So <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now I'm going to uh, change again. Again, events is the theme but a slightly different system. So again, an application we have used. And this is actually, I think, closer to medical because um, it, in, in the FACTA system, which we have developed, uh, we have changed a lot since 2008, we have, uh, we, we mine direct and indirect associations. It's very much the Swanson type of hypothesis of, uh, you know, um, if A related to B and B to C, A to C as well. So this is a kind of straight, uh, a quite well-known uh, approach to, um, uh, for knowledge discovery and hypothesis generation in, in biomedicine. The system um, <clears throat> currently has been initially, does, as I said, uh, operates on the whole of Medline and how it works if you go on our website. If you put a, a query like uh, caffeine, uh, it gives you, uh, we, a priori, we have identified some co concepts which we, were, we thought were important when you're searching. Uh, genes, uh, diseases, symptoms, drugs, and compounds, uh, which are ranked uh, with different types of measures. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the whole factor right now, but they're obviously point one mutual information and uh, frequency and so on. So what it does, basically, if you're clicking into a, a caffeine, the, the, the relations, the direct relations between caffeine and um, fatigue, 
you will have uh, these types of uh, snippets of text extracted from Medline abstracts. Um, so uh, this is the types of, uh, the, actually most of the medics quite like FACTA. They like very much the direct, but also the indirect associations. But this fact operates on queries, on queries which would be complex, but basically nouns, you know, concepts. It's concept uh, associations. Um, so I'll tell you also a bit slightly, one slide about the indirect. The indirect is the two-step, the Swanson type of hypothesis. You're doing a query from through a pivot concept. So you want to say, for instance, uh, how di diabetes uh, affects for instance, other diseases via which genes, for instance. And um, normally, uh, traditionally, FACTA with Icaderin, here's another example. Uh, he will tell you if, you, if your query is uh, Icaderin, you go, in this case, our uh, target is diseases related with Icaderin via proteins. Um, so this. Uh, a type of indirect associations tell you this, this is really the most interesting part for most medics, is um, that Ipecaterine is associated with Parkinson's disease via um, uh, CAS4 and transcription factor EB and so on. Now, events again. <laughs> so we thought, uh, well, we can enhance FACTA to do this type of search, but we can add events. So, so not only cadherin, but in this case we use the gene ontology with the, you know, for the molecular, again it's on the molecular level, so this can be of course enhanced with different types of uh, events. So if you're searching for positive regulation, what the fact that now we will do would extract not only the associations between tumor and cadherin, but related with positive regulation. So it does... Um, concept-based direct and indirect associations with events. And um, um, this is another example, actually, uh, which is a positive regulation. So I should have given you an example, which I skipped. Now, this is actually a level towards, you can enhance FACTA with different concepts and with different event types. And we thought also it's very nice to visualize it because people are fed up looking at the long list <laughs> of uh, names. So this is how it looks if you find direct associations with Icaderin. So it, it, you see here how important is that to various other um, entities, concepts. And uh, you can see the indirect associations. And uh, you can see here how the indirect associations are linked paint with melanoma with various uh, other concepts which have to do with that you have chosen disease and uh, uh, gene. And this is actually um, uh, more various other indirect associations from different other ways. Uh, and that one here is with events. So basically you see indirect uh, uh, or direct associations with a, an event query and you can visualize it. So you can see immediately that, well I'm not a, a medic, so how Icaderin is indirectly associated with the nervous system's disorders, basically, like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and epilepsy. And you can just go and drill down through the documents. But in this case, we thought, I thought it was very interesting to show you an application, how event extraction can be embedded into existing search systems that, are, that do either more complex, like media, who have a, a more, they used on parsing, or FACTA, which is more uh, on concept associations. So now, <clears throat> uh, somehow changing the shift, and I'll tell you another application, why, how again, how event extraction has been used, uh, is, is currently has been used for pathways. So a slightly different uh, topic, but the same theme. So I don't know how many of you know about pathways construction, or I don't know your background <laughs> at all, but um, um, pathways, are again very uh, like the core of systems biology and systems medicine and uh, increasingly people want to see how we can link evidence from text to pathways. So, um, um, and that's a very challenging problem, uh, very um, co automatically constructing pathways, it's really like the holy grail, but 
we think we can do a lot towards providing lots and lots of evidence to uh, allow people to make decisions and construct um, models. Um, and very actually, um, just to give you an, an example, for the mTOR pathway, uh, people to construct this pathway had to read 519 papers. So this is a manual process till now. Uh, they identified uh, four, 964 entities and about 800 reactions. So um, because this is manual, clearly there are lots of uh, things that are missing. They're, they're just going through the literature. It's how you first you search to find the documents and how you identify which components are important to um, basically create, the, to, to say this is a reaction which interacts with another reactant and so on. So um, <clears throat> um, this is where we started actually, this is uh, work we started with the Junichi a few years ago. In, we wrote the grant in 2006, I think. <laughs> And um, the system I will talk about is PathTex, which is still ongoing. We keep on up upgrading and updating it, and it's actually using, um, uh, linking with all sorts of different of pathways. Um, so the architecture of PathTex is basically, uh, if you have various uh, uh, models or, uh, 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 you know, it's a kind of uh, various parameters here, so you have uh, interactions or reactions between various modifi modifiers or we could use um, um, in this case a thing is cell designer but you can use any kind of editor to uh, SPML models to represent this kind of knowledge. You need to bridge that gap that uh, between models with text. So in our case our path text links to uh, two of the systems that's why I explained to you to understand a bit about pathways, I'm, I'm going to tell you about this. Uh, so it's basically name entity search. But fact and media are providing, especially enhanced with events, are providing the type of information that is needed to link pathways to text. How? So, um, well, this is exactly a one kind of snippet to see how this various results. So here is the pathway. Uh, in this case, uh, pathways um, are independent. In this case, we use Payao. Payao is a kind of interface between cell designer, which is a very common way of uh, annotating uh, pathways. There, there are different editors of pathways. Um, but what is important for us to see how basically we can use the various uh, from publications from PubMed or full papers, use our systems to integrate it with this type of model and give the evidence. So what PathText does is actually giving you the evidence to update your model. Um, and for this, you also need um, a, a workbench platform to allow people to make decisions about the ranking of reactions and the ranking of documents. I'm sorry if it sounds only how, uh, I'll, I'll just try to make it as simple as possible because it's a bit, sometimes too much pathological knowledge here. Anyway, this is how it looks, we can forget it. Now, Remember the, exactly, the, he is actually bridging the gap. The reason I put that is, it again, is based on events. So when you're looking at reactions, the reactions are events. So if you see here this information, like if which is a protein, let's put that one here. You have this little square here, it's a reaction. And that reaction is an event, and this event goes to this catabolism basically event. So this protein beef is linked here, is actually degrades A3G, but also as another one here, this kind of uh, diamond, which actually induces this uh, uh, activity as well. So this is how, in order to link this type of representation, in this case with cell designer, you have a square or a, a diamond. In other editors, you might have other types of uh, semantics notation, uh, notations, this is relevant. In the end, what you're doing, we're trying to find out, is linking events, finding events in text with various entities. And um, um, this is how basically path text is doing that, is very much based on extracting events and linking them with pathways. Um, so, 
An example is if you're clicking, for instance, right now to uh, this specific part, this one, you'll have about 844 text mining. It, you see here you have automatic text mining, and you can do a manual. So you can do annotations as well and give them back to the system. So the automatic goes to a FACTA or to media mostly and would extract this type of information and reach with events. And the, uh, the curators, the, the biologists, will see which one is of relevance. So um, what is basically your, you can do is now you start querying reactions by events. So in order to link text with pathways, you need to have a kind of interface. So you're doing, for, like, for instance, a pterodimer association from these two complex. It's basically the query is a protein reaction, an event. And your result is basically from media, a binding event. So this is exactly the type of information the biologists get for automatically from, from text to be able to up update and enrich and find the evidence in pathways. So to do that, if we just want to put a whole an architecture of the whole image of what we are doing right now is here are your pathways, your users, your biologists. What you use here is that it could be anything. We're using Cell Designer because our systems biologists use Cell Designer, Kitano's team. So this is kind of the interface. But what we, we, what we are doing is basically we are working on building the queries using events. We are very much working on uh, um, using, uh, uh, gathering the relevant feedback from the biologist, curating basically the results. And to do that, we have our toolkit, the well-known NGU event mind, but our systems. But to, uh, this part of uh, component I will talk briefly now, it's a platform that allows curation. So what you need to do is when people are giving you this type of information, when you are extracting automatically the information, are the biologists interested in that? Do they think it's relevant? So you need to be able to get the feedback to improve the ranking. So that was actually you have and the query. Then because it's based on machine learning, we're taking all this information and every time we're improving the system for the specific type of pathways. So I, in a sense, this kind of sort of closes the loop of why you need events, why you need to extract deeper information, why you need multi-arguments if you want to, to link the information from pathways, which is at the core of systems medicine, with text. Um, so I don't know how much time do I have, because I have quite a, it's up to you. Keep, keep yeah. going. Mm -hmm. So a very small deviation, but this is important because we suggest to use it for our shared task as well. So I thought I should, <laughs> I should talk about it. So um, one of the way of using that is very often now people use components for processing for text mining uh, um, processing components and annotation components somehow separately. So we have lots of annotation tools and um, of, of different sophistica sophistication, but we also have text processing components very much based on the UEM architecture and philosophy. So it's important to actually integrate the processing with the um, uh, tools, with the annotation tools, but also to allow users to create text mining workflows, which actually they can store, they can use, they can share, they can reuse, and so on. So uh, what two systems that we have done, one was the Ucompare, which uh, um, started at Tsunichi's uh, team, and we uh, um, expanded it by using multilinguality, which I'm not talking right now at all. Uh, and the other I'm talking about Argo, with the Greek ship here, <laughs> which very briefly I'll say what it does. So what it does is basically uh, it links with the Ucompare as well, takes lots of processing components. It's a web-based application. It doesn't have an installation. You can access through by web browser. And it's very interactive. So this is actually what curators can use to uh, see the annotations and to decide uh, from the text mining results if the annotations are OK, choose, and then basically um, uh, you know, feed it back to the system. So very briefly, this is basically the whole thing. This is for, 
for both developers, for workflow designers, and for annotators. So for developers, you, this is links with you, you compare. You can actually uh, um, uh, have all sorts of uh, search engines, uh, name and recognizers, targets, editors, XML editors, and so on. For the workflows, uh, there are people who are actually allows you to design if you want to do, for instance, extract uh, name entities uh, to uh, include taggers, uh, species disambiguators, and end up with a name entity recognizer, and actually compare as well various types of uh, workflows. Uh, the pro you can actually um, uh, process all the workflows remotely without people looking at this. And then uh, the annotation editor is actually allows you to um, uh, look at this, the results and make changes if you don't like. So this is very important for curation, basically. Um, and um, uh, it's using various web services. So on our website, you can have a better look. I'll just tell you later. So here is the workflow. Uh, you can uh, have various components. You can add your own documents. You can actually uh, allow, basically, a link to other people's documents. and. Um, you have a kind of, uh, you can also store uh, workflows. Uh, so a list of current and past workflows. Uh, and here is actually the, the panel where you design. You just drag and click the, uh, the work, the components. Uh, it's just you pick up various components and you just select the workflow of uh, uh, Clio is a search system, a species tiger, uh, 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 itself has another workflow annotations, and various cast writers. And this is how they look like, basically, which is uh, manually uh, explained. So um, what basically it does here is, it's a, an example of a, a workflow, is to, um, uh, you can actually store these various cast writers uh, by, um, uh, basically, uh, you can actually even allow to have different formats, plain text, XML, and so on. So. Um, you can actually create and store a simple workflow with an annotation editor. And um, in this case, we have used, uh, this is Argo, but for events, we have also used another own system, which actually started mostly in Tokyo, Pontus and Sampo have worked, is BRAT. Uh, this is for events. So we're using those two annotation environments for Argo, mostly for entities and creating workflows, and BRAT for events. And this is how it looks like. Uh, uh, for uh, you can actually remove, uh, change, add, and put various properties. And this is where you find the system. It's still, we're still developing it, but it's already in a sort of a decent stage to have a look at. Um, and of course, we're very interested in actually having other people contributing and sharing workflows and uh, processing components. Uh, another, just very, very briefly, it also allows you um, to evaluate. So if you have different components, you can just uh, do the comparison towards uh, in the base of a, a reference evaluator. Right. So now I understand people are tired. So me too. Uh, <laughs> and I'll finish my talk very brief. Well, the last one, which is uh, the most, uh, the very recent work, is the last enhancement of uh, event mine, um, which allows you to. Uh, um, do extra modification of events. So as you realize till now, we are all event-based <laughs> at NACTEM, well not only, but so what it does, uh, meta-knowledge annotation is nothing new. People have worked, talked about this for many, many years. Our, the, our differences, we're all based, uh, this kind of, we can talk pragmatic and discover information on events. So this is the main difference. Um, so the, it gives you different dimensions, different types of um, uh, information, different uh, based on an event. Um, and the important thing is allows you basically to detect what is new knowledge from this kind of uh, meta-knowledge and various types of contradictions that you have in text. It's extremely important for all sorts of applications, for search, of course, but also for uh, scholarly communications, because you can use citation counts and all sorts of things you can integrate. So it's quite an uh, uh, interesting area of research, we think. So this is actually um, an annotation example to show you that the same type of event 
about X activates expression of Y could be presented in text in completely different ways, meaning completely different things. <laughs> so even if you have an event which says about activation of a hypothetical protein with a hypothetical gene, what, how, what the author wants to say about that? So the first thing you can say is about we found that Y activates the expression. So it's a no, you, know, you have a kind of knowledge type examined. Uh, you can have this result suggest, so it's, it's a bit of a speculative, um, not certain, or that has no effect, the polarity, or slightly increased the manner, or might affect certainty. So there are various cues in, around an event that tell you that this thing is perhaps not so certain, uh, it has a different, could be negated, could be speculative, and so on. So just don't have to look so much. Basically, this is the whole, the whole schema, but uh, if different type manners, certainty, source, if it's in this specific paper, other people are citing that, if it's negative, positive, if it's uh, an investigation, an observation, and method, a fact, and other. So what all those things are telling you basically are combined new knowledge or hypothesis. To do that, we took the Genia event corpus, which Tunisia has done in 2008, I think, or nine, and we annotated, it was quite a lot of work actually, with meta-knowledge. So we took all the event types and we created about 36, uh, well, the existing one, and we, had, we used two annotators a biology expert and a linguistics have annotated the whole corpus with bio uh, meta knowledge, with actually a very good internet inter annotator agreement. So uh, the sort of the corpus statistics, as you can see, actually the certainty level it tells you a lot about how people write in text. So you can have different types of knowledge types, so investigation and methods and observations, very uh, certainty. Uh, L3, but also lower certainty, the 6% and the 2.1%, we think is very interesting. So you have facts which are reported with not so much certainty. So that might be quite interesting if you want to construct pathways on the basis of not, not so certain facts. So you, know, you can put weights, for instance, polarities and manners and so on. So uh, rather than, uh, so how now we integrated all that? Uh, is this is a well-known uh, event mine. We added meta-knowledge to, ev to event mine. So we have the pipeline. In the end, you have uh, meta-knowledge annotation. And what event mine does, it uh, tells you it extracts events and also tags them if they're negative, if they have its analysis, if it's high, and so on. So um, basically, you have this type of extra information here. So, as I said, the difference, so you have a, a knowledge analysis, a certain L2, not so negative, high, and source current from this paper. So basically what you do, you're actually going a, a step further to uh, provide more ana analytics to events, and which can be used again for search and for pathways, as I, uh, as I said before, and um, for um, um, what other, other, for instance, for scholarly communications. So I'll just go very quickly on that. So some results on the event mine, um, which we are used actually on the annotated corpus, and also we added on the shared task that we had. Uh, it's about uh, you have different types of uh, performances on the um, uh, knowledge type, certainty, polarity here. And uh, uh, for the negation and speculation, as you realize, this is a lot of work to be done yet. So we're really struggling around the 35% and so on. It's actually with using various, it's actually doing quite well, event mind, with all the various uh, um, clues and based on different, uh, tra this was done on the, on the genie and applied on the shared task. Um, but basically we are all about, you know, some people, performs actually quite well across various negation speculation. The total is overall better. And it's more, um, uh, as I said, the um, um, performance is more stable around various types of uh, um, uh, hedging. 
Um, I think this is a, a very, uh, as you can see, some, you know, in some cases, other people, you have lower on the engagement, but much better on speculation. So I think it's quite important to have more stable, perhaps, results uh, across uh, uh, documents and also across uh, various types of uh, um, information, like uh, hedging. Um, and this is actually um, uh, an abstract and full papers. It was also um, trained on abstracts, so it did okay with full papers. So you see again, we are reaching about uh, the 37%, which is the top, basically, performance. This is, I wanted to stop basically with that, and I'll be not with this, is that uh, we, I think this is a very important area of research. It's hugely important if you want to uh, take types of information, what are the really certain, are they um, in the negated, are they contradictory, so, um, um, and how we can integrate. So we need to improve on that. We need much more work on that. The community needs much more work on that to embed into the, our existing systems. I'll finish because I'm really tired now to tell you the future again, which is a, a, a very important um, project funded by the UK government, and we work on full papers, and uh, not only abstracts, uh, with all this uh, event of the open access. Of, of, out of the 2 million papers, 12% are open access. What we have produced now is what we call the evidence finder, which you'll find here. And what it does, we're going to embed events now, and meta-knowledge, and that's why I finish with this. Uh, what it does, you have a query like uh, AGFR and breast cancer. Because our users are medics, and they don't want to even think about on plates and subjects. So if you say subject and object, they will never use the system. What do we do? We're generating the questions for them. <laughs> so uh, based on, it's all we used NGU, it's parsing and so extracting facts. But once the system, oops, you put the query, the system extracts uh, uh, creates a number of questions which we know, of course, they will be answered because they exist in our stored past results. And then they look at the extracts, and if they like the answers, they will click on that. So this type of system now, they want to add, they're very interested in the meta-knowledge, which is a challenge for us because we are in the <laughs> 40s. So they're really, which is actually kind of the future, people are very interested in the kind of, of hedging. Medics are interested in that. Is it speculative? Is it contradictory? Who said, okay, of course, th there are other uh, components in UK, UK PMC, but this is the text mining part. And um, um, so I'll just go very quickly. And then if you go there, you just go through various entities as well, which are highlighted. But this type of system, will now, I uh, finished my talk now, uh, it's going to be um, for the next uh, couple of years unreached with events of different types, so not only molecular, but more ev like with event mind and also meta-knowledge. So, uh, but because we have uh, two, th two million full papers, this is going to be a kind of full-scale analysis of full papers, a search system based on, on full papers and abstracts, on events and on actually meta-knowledge. Thank you for your patience. I hope I didn't uh, uh, tire you too much. Uh, and all the things I said today, all the services are on our website, on services. Uh, all the tools, event, mine, everything is on our website and all the publications. So any misrepresentation is uh, utterly mine. <laughs> <laughs> are there. Uh, the people who are actually um, have been extremely important, I don't mention Junichi because he's been, um, well, he's still uh, our scientific uh, <laughs> brains, <laughs> but the people who have been involved, uh, current, who are, are currently involved in the center are, are these, and of course, extremely indebted to all their hard work. And now, I finish with what we're going to talk after. Um, so I want to introduce you now the cancer, well, our suggestion for a cancer genomics bio NLP share task in 2013, which we will talk uh, later during the break. 
And we want to work on abstracts and full papers. And we can select, um, basically, this is a follow-up of the um, um, multi so it's events, of course. It's a, a follow-up also of the angiogenesis uh, corpus. Um, and also the corpus, the MLE corpus, which we made available uh, to the community. And we like to extend it to new areas, to work with people, uh, oncologists in the area of cancer, and um, add uh, more types of processes which would be of interest to have a shared task on, on cancer genomics. Now, we would very much like to make available for the, to the community and use uh, our Go and Brad platforms for people to use and um, prepare also the shared task. And uh, we are calling um, for people to um, work with us. And this is where I stop. <laughs> Thank you very much.